You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Slightly Warped, the Slightly Warped podcast with Rick and Big Show. I'm Rick, that's Big Show. Show. I'll be Big Show today. How you doing? I'm all right, how are you? I'm good, I'm good because it's a short week at the regular job. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I took Thursday and Friday off. People keep asking me, why did you take off? It's because I can. Because I wanted to. Pretty much. I got a whole want, bunch of days and I need to start using them. I want another four day weekend. Pretty much. But then, you know, I work at a school. So in a couple of weeks, it's going to be like that. Right. Christmas you'll break. Be out, what? Two weeks? I won't per se, but they will. They'll be out a little over two weeks. They'll be out from the 19th all the way until January 2nd. Hmm. And I get a few days, think, come back, and then a few days off. So I don't think we were out of school that long, or just maybe the older I get, the shorter my memory is. Yeah, that that's what it is. We we we, we did get <laughs> back that kind in of my time. day. We only had Christmas Eve off. We were back on the twenty sixth. Now I know that's not true, but still, yeah, we'd be we'd be talking to him back in our day. We didn't have two weeks between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> the next day right. was New Year's Day, and then we had to go back to school. <laughs> exactly. And them kids will probably believe it too. And we had homework. Didn't we though? Mm-hmm. That was due before we came, before we left for break, and then more due when we came back. And it better be done when you get back. That's right. Yep. So uh, let let's let's start off with this first topic because you know those were rough times, and you know I want to talk about you know today's man, well, not really today's man, but the every man. Um, nice guys finish last. I know you've heard that before, and I want to ask you before we get deep into it, do you really have to be the bad boy or an asshole for all intent and purposes um, to make relationships, jobs, or life in general work out your way? Ask me, do you have to be an asshole? Is that what you're saying? Well, either the bad boy, an asshole, or just have that edge to you that takes away from being quote unquote the nice guy and 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 we can break it into life relationships and and, um work because they may not all have the same answer to you true so you know in in personal relationship it i I guess it's going to depend depend on your partner the type of person that they are um, you know, in this day and age, I have to be all inclusive, but instead of saying it depends on the woman, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> don't want to tick anybody off. Uh, you know what? Screw them. This is on my podcast. I don't care if I piss them <laughs> off or not. It depends on the female in the relationship. If you have to be that way, some women prefer that, you know, um, I, I think it, an overall example of, or an overall answer to the entire question is you have to be a little bit of both. You have to know when to be an asshole and you have to know when to be nice. Mm. Part of me wants to say good answer. Part of me wants to say way to straddle that fence. Uh, No straddle. (laughs) So in business, when you have employees, you have to Mm. know when to congratulate and when to discipline And you have to know who and how. As a teacher, a martial arts instructor, I have to know how you learn as a student. Some students are visual learners. Some students see it and learn it that way. Some students would rather me explain it verbally while I'm showing them how to do it. I have to, you know, I have to be able to uh, bounce between all of those to be successful. Right. So I think the same is in business. You know, I mean, yeah, it is straddling the fence, but it's true. I mean, even look at your own personal relationship with your wife, man. Sometimes you have to be 
You know, sometimes you have to put your foot down. Sometimes you have to be She'd a little probably bit. Probably say I am an asshole. Well, most most <laughs> of our wives would say that. <laughs> I could call my wife in here right now. She'd say the same thing. I'm an asshole. <laughs> my sister calls me an asshole. She calls me a lovable asshole, but she calls me an asshole nonetheless. Hey, but I, I think it. you have to learn how to go in, weave yourself in and out of those situations. Yeah, and, and I think it is easier to do it on the work life thing in general. It's harder to do in relationships because you know, as it is, when we put on our work face, you know, especially if you're in customer service, hey, I'm Rick. It's nice to meet you. All that, but you know, when you with the boys, man, fuck that team. You know, right? It's a whole different thing. Um, in relationships especially when the relationship is new that that that's when things are they're most different and that's when things can be we'll say make or break or defined um i agree with that and, and you are right women have different personalities some of them like that bad boy and if you putting on that bad boy front but you're not really a bad boy that can come back to bite you too and I, I mean, but let's be honest, all women like the bad boy, all of them. They just don't want what comes with the entire package. Real they quick, want, women, any women that are watching this, go ahead and leave a comment if that's true or not true. If it's not true, tell us why that's not true, because I believe show. I believe it. And I ain't going to believe you even if whatever you write anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> you can say what you want but i believe what i believe you know but they don't necessarily want you know the whole package you know they want it, but i will say this men are just as guilty as that with females you know yeah. they want you know a female to be a certain type of way but not all the way there you know what what is that saying a lady in the streets and a freak in the bed right yeah so you know, it, it works both ways you're right Exactly. So I'm not but saying it is, that, this, that it's just a chauvinistic point of view. It's just it is what it is. It is a uh, matter of, you know, putting it on at the right time. I will say right. this, though, when it comes to you ladies out there, don't try to change a man. Don't, I want this man, but then I'm going to change him. He is who he is, just like you are who you are. And you only setting yourself up for failure if you try to change him. And if you're the man that's going to get ran over, to get changed just for that woman, I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to go south quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because sooner or later, whether you believe it or not, you will reach your breaking point. There's only so much that a person can uh, stand when it comes to getting walked over. And that's my whole thing with the nice guys. Uh, we have to make sure that we do not get walked over because we try to please people, whether it be in relationships, with family, or with our jobs. To a point where people will take advantage of us, especially some of these jobs. You'll you'll sweat bullets for hours on the end, days, weeks, months, years, while the quote unquote bad boy does the bare minimum, but seems to get just as far as you do or even farther. Because he might open his mouth up at the right time when it comes time for that promotion. Where you sit back and relax and don't do anything. Thinking that, you know, what more can I do? They've got to tap me on the shoulder for something. It don't work like that. You got to go out and get yours. Yes. Dog eat dog world, unfortunately. Yes. Now I'm going to get off my soapbox now. But uh, one last time, ladies and gentlemen, chime in on this. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. It is the Slightly Warped Podcast, and we are on topic number two. <clears throat> All right. When this airs, it is going to be the end of the first week in December, which means it's time for these New Year's resolutions. Sho, do you have any resolutions coming up? Do you believe in the almighty resolution? I, I mean, I say, believe. Oh, go ahead. Do I, have, do I have belief that I'm going to follow through on any of those? <laughs> no. You know, but do I believe that some people do? And, you know, it depends what it is, you know. And, and it, it I really get that. Depends. I've had my fair share. And <clears throat> some I have definitely followed through on. 
some I fell flat on my face. Um, Going to see how that works out this year. I, uh, as you already know, I, I, I run a Facebook page change and I believe in, you know, everybody, you know, fitness, whether it be physical, mental or spiritual. And we're going to be doing something real soon called, uh, what did they call it? 75 hard. Okay. And you'll see it on the page once I post it and I'll have the date and time to start. It might actually start right before the new year, but it is a 75 day workout. And the object is to go 75 days straight to do it. And there's a lot of benefits to it because if you follow through, you will see the differences. The problem is with no days off, there's a lot of people that don't follow through. They'll get to day 10 or 20 and like, oh, I just don't want to get up and do anything today. Um, and one day becomes three days, three days becomes uh, maybe next time. So yep. it, it's going to be like bowling pins. I'm going to see how many people uh, are in. And then at the end of it, I'm going to see how many people are left over. Are you supplying so, the workouts? Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll put, I'll put all that in there. Everything will be in there. And all we got to do is follow through. How and long are the workouts? Um, I think there are 20 to 40 minutes. It's not bad. But you have it's to doable. do two. You have to do two a day. There's okay. a problem. So, and, and a lot of people start off, oh, this is easy. And it won't be the work that gets to them. It'll be the commitment. And that goes right up there with this New Year's stuff. Um, Because I've got a couple of things I want to do in 2023. But the difference is, I am not putting a number on it. I'm not saying January 1st, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Because you set yourself up for failure when you plan to do this. If I'm going to do something, guess what? I'm going to do it. Because if you really, really want to do it, why wait? There's what? True. This, today's what, the 6th? Yep. There are 25 more days before you even get to January 1st. Why would you wait another day if there's something you really want to do? Just start it. Do it. And, and you know, that's what I plan on doing for several things. And I strongly believe two things. One, by the time January 1st rolls around, I'm already going to be doing some of the things that I want to be doing. So I, half the battle is over. You've started. Two, because of that, because you don't put a number on it, I strongly feel that you have the better chance of following through and finishing it. That's a good point. I'm interested to see what your workouts are about. It's, they're not my workouts now. It's, well, this well is I mean, you're going to, you, I'm gonna you post obviously it. did some sort of workout and you're going to post it. It's a, I mean, for somebody to follow, right? It's not, it's, hey, it, I need you to work out 20 minutes. No, no, it's Your it's choice. called it's called seventy five hard, and I'll I'll put links into the website. They've already got oh, okay. the workouts up. All you do is go gotcha. to the website. Everything's totally free. Gotcha. So kind of like P ninety X, but seventy five days. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. All right. I know. Um, I me me and the misses did P ninety X. Did you about ten year about ten years ago? And we got to seventy five days. See, now you can do 75 and hard because we know you I, can go 75 days. But the problem is, is they give you one day off every 10 days in P90X. See, now you don't get any days off with 75 hard. It's 75 days straight. Hopefully they know what they're talking about because you got to rest your muscles. You do, but you don't work the same muscles every day either. Hopefully. So, hopefully. <laughs> I, I, I've gotten a sneak peek at the workout, so. All right, but I'm looking be, forward to taking good. a look at it. You should be good. Notice, notice, people, I said, take a look at it. I didn't commit. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to do it. I said, I'm looking forward to looking at it. There it is. All right, everybody, you're listening to the Slightly Warped Podcast with Big Show and Rick. And as we transition into sports, because we can do that, we love sports, Prime time, Deion Sanders. My man got the offer 
last week from Colorado, took the offer. So he will be the new head coach and show I was of two minds on the subject. When it first broke, I believe that she he should not take this offer. He should hold out. He should wait for something better, yada, yada, yada. But I watched him on YouTube when he addressed his Jackson State team as he was leaving. And he told them this, and this is very important. I'm paraphrasing. But it was something to the effect of when you are a coach, no matter what level it's at, you're not just a coach. You're there to either move up or you're going to get fired. It's going to happen one way or the other. And I'm like, damn, Prime, you put it out there like that. That was real talk. And and he's right. He could have, you know, a one and nine season next year, a two and eight season, whatever. And then all of a sudden he wouldn't be Jackson State's head coach. He'd be in the unemployment line like, you know, Joe Blow. So take the 29 million while you can be the coach at Colorado. And, you know, if the FSU job ever opens up, then, you know, if that's your lifelong dream, if an NFL team taps him on the shoulder and that's what he wants to do, go for it. I I like his philosophy. Keep moving forward. Keep moving up. What do you think? I agree. I think it's a phenomenal move for college football. I think it's a great move for him. Um, he's really fun to watch just as a person in general. I mean, his granted, we all grew up watching prime time, you know, high step, you know, um, all that, but just his example as a man in this world that we live in today, um, he's fun to watch. You know, I, I, I watched his YouTube, um, meeting with the Colorado team, and I, I have not like, seen that yet, but I heard. I was like, man, shit, I'm ready to play for him. <laughs> you know, I, I don't go there, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's good. I, you know, and part of your question, too, was, you know, is it a good thing for Jackson State? I mean, what else could he do for them? You know, They went I mean? undefeated. I mean, you know. They went undefeated two years in a row, right? Because this is their second year. Last year, I think they did lose one. Okay. But, so, but they won know, the championship last year. Did they? They won it this year. I know they did this year. And they're getting ready to go to this new bowl to win it. I mean, but he got a new football practice facility, lift room. I mean, he did so much for that. He, he literally league, changed the culture college. of that. Yes. Of that team. Most definitely. That, you know, wouldn't have done – it you know, nobody else would have been able to do that. But you know him. what I like best about him? I mean, I wouldn't care if they went, you know, eleven and zero or zero and eleven. The way he talks to them, he talks to them like a really concerned person who's trying to create men. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what he's doing. Yeah, and like I, I I heard an interview on him. He has no desire to coach in the NFL. Okay. And he said because he cannot be around people that will not want that are getting that are actually getting paid millions of dollars to not do their job. He goes, you know, college kids are different. They're trying to get to that point. Yeah. You know, so I don't, you know, time will tell. I don't foresee him coaching in the NFL. And I get that. He's bringing a lot of them Jackson State kids with him too to Colorado. Oh, told, yeah, I heard that. He told he told he, he told them kids at that meeting. Colorado said, "Hey, you don't like what's coming?" He goes, "Hit the, hit the portal now because there's some there's some positions that are already covered." Yeah, now a lot of <laughs> we people, know one of them is going to be quarterback, obviously. His son. Yeah, because he did say he was bringing him in. But here's the deal: a lot of people were like, "Oh, how dare he do that?" No, that's the way to do it. That doesn't necessarily mean they need to hit the portal because if you really believe that you can start, stay and show that you can start. Because my philosophy is this, and this goes right, this goes to the quarterback that's there right now, too. If you're not good enough to beat out his son or anybody else that he brings, then it doesn't matter if you go to another school 
and you take the starting job, you're still not the best quarterback out there. If you want to be the best that you can be, you need to be neck and neck with the top competition all around you, including your own team. Well, I'm going to I'm going to disagree with you slightly because it's a team sport. So, yes, on the Colorado thing, if it, it you know, if you're not going to be better than his son or whoever she brings, then by all means, go ahead and hit the portal and go over to Colorado State or whoever else you're going to cuz you may not be the best quarterback on the field on that particular day, but you could be on the best team that day. And I'll go back to Trent Dilfer winning the Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens. He wasn't the best quarterback when he played that game. Oh, God, no. But they won. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah, that's okay. Where, I, I feel you. I feel you. You know, I. but I, it doesn't matter. If, if you were the best quarterback in the Heisman Trophy winner, Deion, Deion ain't going to not play his son. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I'd still play for prime <clears throat> because I feel like and this is old me talking. I might have been a different mindset when I was 18, 19 years old. But me as a full-grown adult now, I feel that there's so much that I could learn from him to get me ready for the next level. If oh, there's yeah. going to be a next level, you know, oh, yeah. that I probably couldn't learn from another coach. So, yeah. I'd oh, say. sure you could. You could you could learn just as much from another because there's plenty of old NFL coaches well, coaching. I'm not I'm not football. saying as far as them having the insight, but I'm saying as far as them giving the insight. Uh, a, a lot of coaches per se don't have his personality, and they may say something to these kids that these kids quote unquote don't really hear. But the way Prime puts it out there, it might absorb a little bit better if, if you take my meaning. You know, no, I get he, it. I understand. In, in other words, he's more relatable. I mean, if I'm yes. gonna, if, give me a choice. Hey, you can play for Nick Saban or you can play for Deion Sanders. I'm gonna pick Deion. I would pick Nick Saban. Would you though? The only reason why I say it is because Nick Saban is a proven winner. Deion hasn't won nothing yet. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from from a win loss standpoint. But you know, so if I, 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 if, again, I'm and, looking at it from a full life standpoint. And does Dion right? But kids ain't looking for real life, and, and that's why kids I said that's that's coming yeah. from adult Rick that's already grown, <clears throat> right? But if I was like a, a a high level recruit, and those are my two choices, you know, it really depends on the situation. I mean, yeah. fan me, you know, what would go play for Dion? You know, what I'm saying? exactly, but. You know, being if I'm being realistic, it would be Nick Saban just because he's he's that is a pro team playing college football. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. OK, real quick, everybody. But here's Let also what, before we oh, move on. Ahead. Oh, I was I was just going to throw him the question, but go ahead. Yeah. Before we bring, you know, move from that topic. One thing that bothers me, and I've seen this, and a lot of people bring this up, is people are more mad at Dion for leaving in the state of Mississippi than they are at Brett Favre for stealing all that money from Mississippi. Mm, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Then they are wrong. They are wrong as the day is long. You should never be mad at <clears throat> anybody who advances themselves for any particular reason. Never. So why be mad at Brett Favre? He advanced himself. He advanced himself <laughs> illegally. <laughs> you didn't say legal or illegal. You said advanced themselves is what you said. And maybe most of those people in the state of Mississippi are thinking the way you think. <laughs> right. That's why I they're just, not as mad. I just, uh, I just find that, you know, they're focusing on a guy trying to better himself and his kid, I mean, his kids are actually going to get to play in a D one school, you know, and that type of thing, and get that experience versus, yeah. you know, and, and understand this, everybody. Being we robbed. are not, we are not saying, oh, hey, Colorado's going twelve and zero next year. We don't know that. They might go one and eleven. You know, we don't know. I doubt division. They, they used to be in the Big Twelve. Who are they with now? 
Um, are they a Pac-12 team? That's why I don't know. I'm not for sure. Uh, see, I'm going to look that one up. Siri, what division? What conference are they in? Yeah, I said division. You're right. It should be conference. Mountain West. They are the Mountain West. See, he can make some noise there. Wait, they're not the Mountain West. Where's Colorado at? <clears throat> Pac-12. They're in the Pac-12. I'm sorry. They can still make some noise. Oregon and them are in that one, right? Oregon, USC. Oh, he's playing the big boys. Utah, Oregon, USC. Oregon State, UCLA, Washington, Arizona, Cal, and Arizona State. Oh, and Stanford, even though they suck right now. So he can make some noise there with the he, right team. He can make some noise. Uh, yeah. I think the last time Colorado was relevant was when Cordell Stewart was quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a minute for him. It's been a minute. What do you guys think about Deion Sanders and his move to Colorado? Will it be successful? Do you think he did the right thing? Drop us some information in the comments. Let us know. All right. Uh, lastly, we come to that time of the day where we talk about the National Football League. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, bro, AFC West. Here we are. This is our division, man. Um. A few things happened. We'll start with that before we get to the game predictions. Um, we're going to start with Las Vegas. They had a tall task. We got to beat the Chargers. Well, Keenan Allen talked some big shit. Mm -hmm. And they made him pay. Raiders won. Um, it wasn't as close as the uh, score. Trust me, saw the game. They did good. It, it wasn't a total blowout either, but I, I, I'm going to say this about the Chargers first. Can we stop with the Justin Herbert stuff? Can we just stop? What do you mean? Justin Herbert is not the next big thing in the NFL, and I'm tired of the NFL pushing their agenda. They want to make Justin Herbert, um, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow as good or better than Patrick Mahomes. Um, it's kind of like the NBA used to do for, he's the next Jordan. No, he's not. There's only one Jordan. Well, if you he's had to rate those three quarterbacks in order, it would be Burrow, Mahomes, Herbert. No, Burrow, Mahomes, Allen. No, I said those three quarterbacks in order. Oh, those, just those three. Well, yeah, Herbert would be behind them. But he'd right. be behind a whole bunch of other quarterbacks. But the only reason why I say that is Burrow has played Mahomes, and Mahomes has never beaten Burrow. I, I get that. Mahomes has played Herbert, and Herbert's never – well, no, Herbert has beaten Mahomes one time. I was thinking he one never time. beat him. But Your still. Carr beat Mahomes one time, you know. So, you know, what are we talking here, you know. True and that. that's my quarterback, and I'll tell you. Actually, I'll tell you that Derek Carr is better than Herbert, though. No, he's Number, not. Numbers Shut don't lie. Numbers Shut don't lie. Your face. Numbers don't lie. Shut your face hole. And by the way, they're dead even on the head to head record. Numbers don't lie. He is not better. He might be playing better right now, but he is not a better quarterback. You put Herbert on the Raiders team right now, Raiders have a winning record. Better than be what right. they are now. You could be right. No, there is no could be. It would be. You know, I mean, if Keenan Allen, Carr, if Keenan Allen Carr, keeps his mouth shut, the Chargers oh, have a on the Chiefs roster instead of Mahomes. We're not perennial Super Bowl contenders. I don't know. That team is pretty stacked. They were stacked with Alex Smith. Alex Smith and Derek Carr, about the same. I take that as a compliment because, you know. You should. Alex Because Alex that hurt me out. to say. <laughs> Speaking of hurt, when are y'all going to beat the Bengals? Playoffs. 
Okay. Because I, I read an interesting stat today. Those two teams have played three times this year. Yep. Three times. And I'm like, three? Oh, yeah, the first one was January 2nd, then the playoff game, and then last week. So, yep. yeah. Um, and all of them were three-point losses, by the way. So it's not like they were blowouts. It's not like that one team had a decisive advantage. So it's like – and I, I actually thought Sunday that this was going to be it. When y'all finally took the lead, I'm like, there it is. There it is. Until Kelsey fumbled. There and it is. And I was like, there it went. And I'm going to say this about Kansas City. It seemed kind of like Kelsey wasn't his usual self that day to me. Oh, no. I, I think – I, let's not over – let's not read more into what happened, okay? The, the, the Bengals and the Chiefs are very evenly matched. Here's the problem. The Bengals are not scared of Kansas City. Buffalo is scared of Kansas City because they've seen what can happen in 13 seconds. Yeah. Cincinnati don't Cincinnati don't care. That we play just about the most perfect football game we can play, with the exception of the fumble. And I'm gonna go back to that very last play that it was third and eleven. We had to stop them for them to punt, so we got a chance to try to tie the game. And Burrow throws a dart to Higgins. And uh, McDuffie or whoever the cornerback was was covering couldn't have covered him any better. Yeah, that was perfect coverage. They just outplayed us. Yeah. They out executed. That's all that is. But I now, tell you what, I would have. I would like to see us play when we're healthy. We didn't have Tooney, our our left guard. Mm -hmm. We didn't have Tony, the wide receiver, and we didn't have. Hardman, our wide receiver. So two of our speedsters weren't there. So hopefully in the playoffs, everybody be healthy. Now, granted, Cincinnati didn't have Mixon. And I think that's also the difference. They run the ball and didn't care. They just kept running it. We well, that, that boy, P. Ryan, Samaji, yeah, he's a bad boy. Yeah, he's, he's bad. a bad boy. You know, now, him and Mixon now, now, is I will say this. Punch. I will say this. Yeah. Your guy Pacheco, he impresses me every freaking week. That dude oh, yeah, runs like with him. reckless abandon. I like that's him. what you like to see in a run. Yeah, I like him. If we if we could get some better tackle play, I I heard a stat today that uh, Orlando Brown and Wiley, so our left and right tackles, are number one and number two, giving up most quarterback pressures in the NFL. I think Orlando's mm. got like 38 and Wiley's got like 37. Mm. You Interesting. Know, that's we got to get better tackle play. Well, here's the cure coming up as we wind it down here for better play. You got the Broncos coming Sunday. Actually, no, you, you go to you go to the Broncos. But it doesn't matter where we trust play. Trust me. Them. Trust me, I'm a Raider fan. You can beat them. You can beat them. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be like, you know, 42 to 3. It's going to be close. <laughs> I got Kansas City winning as well. I, I think it'll be a little bit closer than that. It, it'll okay, be 30, 42 to 6. It'll be 37 to 3. Fair enough. And that's, I also heard that's a with weird Russell stat. Wilson getting taken out of the game by Chris Jones. I heard a weird stat, too. Denver has only scored three touchdowns since Halloween. Um. Yeah, because last week they played the – was it the Ravens they played? No, they played the Ravens the week before last, wasn't it? Oh, no, 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 it was last week. They played the Ravens and they were up in that game nine to three all the way to the last minute. Yep. And they and gave lost. up the touchdown and lost 10 to nine. Take him lead or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the Broncos are in trouble. Uh, Miami, who lost to the Niners, is at the Chargers. And I think My, what, My, Miami, Miami should bounce back. Miami's going to light them up. I guarantee it. I don't know about lighting them up, but should bounce back. Um, I don't know if Keenan Allen keeps talking shit. It, I'm sorry, <laughs> barbecue chicken. <laughs> Miami should light them back up. I mean, Miami should 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 bounce back. Who the Raiders got? Um, Thursday night, the Rams, the the depleted Rams who now have taken Baker Mayfield. 
No. They just signed him before we got on the show. Because Baker Are Mayfield. The Rams this Thursday night? Yes. Oh, yeah, y'all should beat him. Yeah. And I hope Baker plays because we have such luck when we play Baker. So we got Kansas City, Miami, Raiders. Yes. Kansas City shouldn't lose again this year. Okay. Recap. We got Denver, KC. Or I'm sorry, KC, Denver. We got KC. Uh, Miami over the Chargers. Raiders over the Rams. I think you said the same thing. The rest of the world won't be able to see my uh, my playoff picture mind until next weekend. And yes, shout out to my lovely wife, Heather. <laughs> we are so out of here. I, I need a drink. We are slightly warped. Take us out. Again. <laughs> Later. Later.